Patient comfort and anxiety are no laughing matter. However, we do have laughing gas to help those patients who are anxious and are afraid of pain. Um, there seems to be a lot of misinformation and just simply lack of information when it comes to nitrous oxide or laughing gas. In today's program, I am very excited to have Stephanie Draws, who is a nurse practitioner who's been using two different nitrous oxide systems in her office, and uh, we are going to talk about nitrous oxide and everything related to it when it comes to the medical office. So thank you so much for coming on the program, Stephanie. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. So tell me, so we're both urology in urology practices. Tell us how you, you, well, first of all, what made you all decide to get nitrous oxide in your office? So I, I think, and, and I'm sure you're well aware that a lot of patients come into these procedures being possibly their first time having these procedures, new, new to the office, new to the procedure, new to the doctor. And there's a lot of anxiety that just comes in seeing the doctor alone. And then to add in a procedure, oh, we're going to be taking a look in your bladder today, or we're going to be, you know, doing this vasectomy. And I think there's just a lot of fear behind that. And so we saw the need to get that uh, that that safe option for patients to be able to still drive themselves to their appointment, to still feel comfortable in the office, and to not have to hire a CRNA or a, another healthcare provider to monitor these patients. Um, and so the most cost effective and smoothest way of going that route was with the, with the NITRA system. When you guys were looking for nitrous oxide systems in your office, for your office, uh, did you, what, what systems did you come across? And, and for everyone who's not familiar, familiar, nitrous oxide is a molecule that, you know, two nitrogens and oxygen, um, and is, uh, it's been around forever. So how did you pick from the systems that are out there? So really there's, for medical offices, there's two main systems that are on the market with some minor variations and one being Pronox, one being Nitronox. And for those who are familiar with Nitrous, most patients are, oh, I'm familiar with Nitrous uh, from a perspective in, in my dentist office. And that Nitrous is very different in that those machines are able to be adjusted by the physician. And so you can adjust to increase the nitrous based on the patient's comfort or decrease the nitrous based on the patient's response. Whereas the ones that are more common in the medical office are a 50-50 split, meaning that it's 50% oxygen and 50% nitrous. And that that is automated by the machine and the pressures in the, the hoses and in the tanks. And so uh, we we looked at both of those and saw there are just some subtle differences, but but in the long run, they both create the same delivery of nitrous. So on the screen, I'm showing uh, the uh, Nitronox and the Pronox systems uh, side by side, and it seems like one stole the design from the other because they look very, <laughs> very similar from the head on down, um, mm -hmm. but it's, uh, they, uh, and, and they work similarly in that they deliver 50% oxygen and 50% uh, nitrous oxide. Now there is a there is a third system out there called nitrous seal, but that is like you okay. said it's adjustable. So the right. the concentration of nitrous is adjustable in the nitrous seal. We're not going to be talking about that tonight. We're going to talk about the two that are fixed concentrations and um, that is really very very similar. So I want to I want to find out how you picked the systems from between the two systems? So I had had, I think, and, and this is important for everybody that's looking into these systems, those reps that work for those nitrous companies can bring those tanks out to you, can let you try it for the day free of charge, can, can bring the oxygen, bring the nitrous, bring the machine, allow you to use it in the office. So what we did was we had two scheduled procedure days and I had reached out to the reps and I said, we have two scheduled procedure days. I really want to try this before I buy it. And I want to see the patient's response. I want to see that it's safe. I want to see that it's easy for, for my staff to, to use and to administer. I want to see how the tanks are changed out. All that nitty gritty stuff that, you know, really can make or break the flow of your day when you're doing procedures. And, and one thing that, you know, stood across, across the board was that these systems are self-actuated. So these are 
patients can self-administer the, the nitrous gas. And so what that means is the patient's going to hold a little tube in their mouth or a face mask, and they're going to breathe that oxygen and nitrous mix in. And when they stop breathing, that nitrous no longer is being delivered. So you're not having to worry about these patients overdosing on nitrous or, you know, on the gas. Um, they, they're really, when they're comfortable and they're breathing more comfortably, they're controlling, they're controlling that anti-anxiety effect. And so I really just liked that across the board. Uh, so we, we use the two different systems and the main difference is, is the alarming of the system and, and cost. So cost, you can bargain with your reps. Okay. They're, they're, Always. you know, do your, yes, do your homework, look up the other machines that are on the market, show them the numbers, show them where you want to be. And the, the nitrous nitronox, you have to watch your gauges a little bit more because there's no alarm. So when you're out of gas, you're, you have to keep an eye on that. So that can be easily warded off by just having an extra tank or two in the room and switch out that tank. Uh, if you know you're going to have a long case ahead of you, uh, then maybe switch that tank before that patient comes in. The Pronox has an alarm. However, what I will say, and, and Pronox is, is pretty, uh, pretty, that's, that's a, they try to make the alarm a deal breaker. And for us, it's actually quite disturbing when you're, when you if that tank goes empty and now this alarm is blaring and the patient's already nervous. And, and so we have both and they both work quite similarly, but I would say the main, the main difference that I've noticed is, is the alarming. Um, but if you're paying attention to those gauges, I don't know that the alarm is really, really uh, such a deal breaker. Okay. It's really what's going to be best for your practice. Yes, yes, definitely. That's probably the biggest distinguishing factor between the two systems, Nitronox and, and uh, Ponox. Now, let's go back to what you said about patient administered. And I think that is the key point when it comes to these nitrous oxide or Nitronox or uh, Nitrosil. These are patient administered analgesics and amnestic and, and possibly, uh, you know, anxiolytics. So patients cannot overdose on these gases in this delivery system. So one of the criteria for patients to be eligible for the, the use of these nitrous oxide systems is that they have to have the ability to hold on to the mask or the tube. This is unlike, and I have to explain to my patients, unlike what they had at the dentist's office where they wore a mask around their nose and they're forced to breathe the gas that's being delivered the, the systems that we use in our offices is totally different in that the patients control how much gas they get. So depending on the, the depth of respiration and also how rapidly they breathe in and out, that is how much gas they get. And they cannot overdose on it. Exactly. And it's super exactly. safe. It's it's very safe. And I, and I think that there's a lot of uh, misleading information on the internet uh, in a lot of areas. But when it comes to nitrous, I think that a lot of the information that people read is more so along the lines of the side effects and potential dangers when in the dentist's office. Yeah. And, and as a patient, I'm thinking the dentist's office is more of a safer environment than my medical doctor who's doing a procedure on me. But actually, the, the gas that's administered in the dentist's office is upwards of nitrous content of 70%, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And that is when you start running into trouble with dizziness, nausea, nausea yeah. yeah. Those kind of things, yeah, and so we really don't see that in our practice. And that is, and and again, the the gas in the in the dentist's office that is being, I, I call it forced upon you because you have no yeah. option. You you're breathing through your nose because your mouth is being worked on. So right. that is right. very very different than how we deliver the gas. In that the patient has to volitionally, volitionally take a breath in and out mm -hmm. through the mask or through the tube. So that's very yeah. important. And you said the main differences between the two are the dial and the alarm. So I'm going to show on the screen uh, the um, uh, Nitronox. And this is a close-up shot of the front of the machine. It actually has two gauges. One is nitrous oxide pressure and the other one is line pressure. And actually there's a third gauge above uh, that I don't have it shown on the screen. But um, th that is the Nitronox. Now, 
For Pronox, Pronox has a different face configuration, and it's a lot simpler. This is actually a picture of my Pronox machine. It simply has a little indicator on the left side that's nitrous oxide, indicator on the right side that's green that's oxygen, an on-off switch, and then one tube in the middle that goes to the breathing uh, tubing for the patient. So that is that is all that is for nitrous versus um, uh, uh, Pronox versus um, nit uh, Nitro seal. No. Nitronox. Nitronox. Sorry. <laughs> so many names. So that's the difference between Pronox and Nitronox. Uh, is that the indicator, you have three indicators on the uh, Nitronox that you have to watch, whereas on the Pronox, there's an alarm. And for you, you actually own both machines, right? We do. And how that how that kind of happened was, was really, uh, we had we purchased the Pronox unit first. And we uh, used that for a couple of weeks. And we decided that at our, we have two offices and we decided that at one office we would have the nitrous and use that system. And we were having such an alarming response with patients wanting to use it and, and knowing that it was there. Even the patients that were like, oh, I'm okay. I, I'm not nervous. And then they're like, oh, can I have the nitrous? And, and we're like, yeah, of course. Uh, we decided to get a second unit for the other office. And the rep who had come out had actually lowered the price by $1,500. And so we said, hey, we'll, we'll take that second unit and, and we'll just, we'll run with it. And I think what's super important from a physician perspective is that this can be a really great source of cash revenue for your practice. And so, um, it, it, and really you're making your money back quite quickly. So, um, yeah, the Sorry, first, my, my, my oh, kids hi, hi. decided to come out of bed. Um, you guys need to go sit down on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, it really can be quite a, a great source of revenue as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I would have to agree. Uh, the first year I uh, started using it, I used it hundreds of times. And the, the patient acceptance is extremely high. And it, it, as, as long as you can explain the benefit to the value to the patient, it decreases pain, decreases anxiety. And for some of my patients, and I actually have one of them on YouTube and Facebook, telling, I mean, he... he insisted on giving me a video testimonial so that he could share how he didn't even remember his vasectomy while he was on nitrous yeah. oxide. And he wanted to tell the potential patients who are coming in how another urologist tried to perform the procedure on him years ago and it failed. And yet when he went yeah. through nitrous oxide with me, he didn't even remember the procedure. So that that was such a that's a, such an awesome testimonial. <laughs> I don't ever really get guys is. who insist on leaving a video testimonial, but he wanted to. Yeah, that's 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 great. And that's what we aim to do is we aim to we aim to, you know, have have this so that patients are comfortable. They're they're happy with their procedure. They're happy with the outcomes. And it seems like most patients that come back who have had the nitrous are actually much more relaxed about moving forward with their visits and their appointments and their follow-ups and they they seem to tell their friends about it and then you know it, it, this is a, this is a thing that i've realized is is really not common it's just not common in, in a lot of medical doctors offices and so i think it really stands you out as an elite practice to have that uh, that service for patients at relatively inexpensive costs for the patient yeah, and I think the two machines, when, when you mentioned cost, the two machines uh, price-wise are, are comparable because they know they, they're, 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 they're out there, they're competing against each other. So that is, uh, that is definitely uh, something that you can negotiate. You may be able to play off of the, the two companies. And um, I, know, I know they're both very uh, price competitive for the physicians to, uh, to, so that they could uh, adopt and acquire the uh, capital equipment. It's not, it's not that expensive. It's I think five or fifty five hundred or six thousand dollars. And like you said, Stephanie, it right. pay, it pays itself off very quickly, and the benefit yeah. to the patient is is phenomenal. Yes. Okay. So you the, the one thing the big differentiator you said was having to watch the gauges with the Nitronox, and then for Pronox you get the alarm. I personally have. Uh, I personally have Pronox, and um, it and it does alarm when one of the gases is low. It's interesting that the um, uh, that the uh, Pronox machine is the the alarm is actually powered by uh, the, one of the gases. So when one one gas is low, it'll start to alarm, and the alarm 
when it's low, when while it's being in use, the the alarm does not go off continuously. It is only going off when someone takes a deep breath or the user takes a deep breath. And, uh, right. and but it is it is it, you, it's undeniable that the alarm is going off. It's yeah. like a it's like a big woo type of a sound. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if maybe we have a different system, but it's quite loud. Um, I do think that we may have gotten an older version, um, but you know it, it's it, it's not a deal breaker. My patients aren't. <laughs> running out of the room sure um but i i think some and, and sometimes it is nice because if you are knee deep in a procedure then uh it, it's kind of a nice reminder like hey you gotta change this so um hey hey stephanie i i just, I, I see i hear the little one down there uh but if you want to um put her to bed or or yeah, if you want do to take you mind her, just no not at minute. all not at Thank all you. take your time so anyway guys we are talking about um we are talking about nitrous oxide um, and how we can implement it in our practices. Stephanie works in a uh, urology office in the Midwest. She has both nitrous ox she has both Pronox and Nitronox. Boy, there's so many noxes. <laughs> there's Pronox and Nitronox, and we're comparing the uh, we're comparing the uh, two machines and how we implement them in the office. She's already talked about why she picked one machine versus the other. We talked about the cost, and we also talked about uh, the, the main differences between, the, different, the main difference between the two is an audible alarm on the Pronox versus gauges that you have to watch using Nitronox. <laughs> okay, I want to make sure, <laughs> it's so confusing. Uh, yeah, okay. sorry, sorry about that. John. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> You're, you, after all, you are a mom with three little ones under seven, yeah. right? So I really yeah, and, I, and a husband and well <laughs> that's that's, that's, four that's, that's four kids that's four kids that's that's what, what my wife tells me the fourth yeah, child yeah. and 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 typically my camera is the other baby <laughs> <laughs> when we're going to an event or something the camera is the other baby so we are we are uh, live streaming this on Facebook on the Thriving Urology Practice Facebook group we have Kelly Jason Evan and Sarah currently watching so if you guys have any questions please feel free to leave them. And uh, we'll try to upload this on uh, the various platforms so that this would benefit other people. So you have both nitro nit uh, Nitronox and Pronox on, yes. at, at two different offices. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. We so do. They'll, now they stay there. Okay. A big question for a lot of the institutional offices is fugitive emissions or or gases that patients exhale and then Right. the environmental exposure for the healthcare workers in in the in the offices how do you guys right. mitigate that so as you know nitrous is a heavy gas so when the patient exhales that it's going to the floor and usually that's through an ex, an exhalation tube that's attached to the mouthpiece or the mask now uh, when we first got the unit we were not really aware of the scavenger um and the scavenger is basically a way for that nitrous to be kind of uh, sent away from the the area, and for lack of better terms, yeah, captured and, so, and, and safely eliminated. Exactly. And so when we met with our rep, the scavenger was really not discussed. And just in kind of doing some research and reading, I was like, oh my goodness, we we haven't even talked about this or looked into this. And what we found is that when you get the system, you're given a self testing kit to basically leave a small disc in the room that's maybe the size of a half dollar. And so you, you, the idea is that you do that self-testing kit on a day when you've done a lot of procedures, you've been using the nitrous a lot, you have it close to the machine, you mail that in, and then you get your results in about a week. And we were well within the limits of normal nitrous uh, gas in, in the air with no special equipment, no scavenger, no, nothing. Um, there, so, so for us, the, the safety was, was obviously concern, uh, but we made sure that we did the proper things in order to, to have patients confident that they could use this safely, that the staff could be using this safely and, and that nobody was being put in any sort of danger. 
it also it depends on the duration of the of the procedure for sure. And and can you tell us briefly what procedures you use nitrous on? So we basically offer nitrous as a service for any procedure in the office. We had initially started using them for urolifts and prostate procedures, uh, as well as vasectomies. And then we really saw the need that even something as simple as a cystoscopy, patients were getting fearful, maybe canceling their appointments. And so we really saw that as a need that we need to offer this across the board and that there's really no right or wrong procedure to offer the nitrous for. And again, this is cash revenue for your office. This is making patients more comfortable. This is making your staff allowed to do the procedure more comfortably because the patient is more comfortable. 100%. And, and, and you're getting happy patients. You're getting good reviews. You're getting word of mouth. You're getting referrals. Because, of course, if somebody's fearful to have a cystoscopy and you're the only provider in the in the remote area that's offering the nitrous, they're going to be coming to you. And so it really does kind of put your practice up a notch as far as being a more desirable place to, to have those sort of procedures. And it takes out having to pay an outside anesthesiologist, having to schedule a procedure at a hospital because it 99% of patients just do so much better on, on the nitrous. It, it's it's you hit everything on the nose. Um, it's safe. It is uh, good for the practice. It's good for the patient. And uh, as far as the scavenging and the fugitive emissions uh, affecting the uh, healthcare worker, in my in my office, we're kind of bouncing between two procedure rooms, and I mostly use it on vasectomies. Having done having used nitrous in the last about two. Um, two about almost three years, having used it thousands of times, actually used it thousands of times, I have not noticed any effects on myself because I'm in there, and my medical assistants have, uh, they're, they're, they're kind of they're kind of bummed because they never used <laughs> they never used it and then never yeah. felt the effects of nitrous yeah. oxide dis despite yeah. being in the room all these all these years now uh, while we have nitrous, so it is actually very safe. But for the institutional users. They are governed by uh, hospital boards that are uh, less uh, or more stringent, I guess. Yeah. Um, they, they don't they don't they, they practice in the ivory towers and they're, they're not really actually in the trenches. Um, and uh, I, I, of course, I understand their concerns when it comes to uh, legal risks. But there are ways to uh, mitigate that with uh, drainage systems to to mm -hmm. eliminate the gas, uh, test uh, concentration, gas concentration testing like you did um and in real life it's just it's really a non-issue uh, right we're, we're, i'm using and I think, go ahead i think uh one thing to to keep in mind is the number one medical field that uses nitrous pronox and nitronox is ob <laughs> these are pregnant women yeah in labor okay then then we all know how pregnant women in labor are worried about everything about that's getting to that baby. And so that is the number one users of the, this, this gas. And so I think it's good to keep in mind that no company is going to knowingly allow you to utilize a gas in your practice that's harmful to your staff, to your patients, let alone give it to pregnant women. <laughs> so I, I always think about that. I was well, 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 let's keep in mind that pregnant, those pregnant women are in their third trimester and they're delivering. However, we should caution, um, obviously you all should consult with the manufacturers to right. get the, the latest information about safety, but you should not use the gas on first, tri first second trimester women. This is true, yes. Yeah. So yes. For, for laboring women, yes, it is uh, very, very commonly used. Yes. Okay, some people have also asked when it comes to these gases, uh, the cost of these gases and how do you handle the, the, the gases, the actual delivery, you know, the, the big tanks. So you mean replacing the tanks yeah. uh, on the system? Yeah. Okay. So, so that was also another learning curve. When you buy the system, you're thinking, oh, well, the rep is going to contact me and supply me the nitrous and the oxygen. And it really doesn't work that way. You do need to ask your representative for a referral for a gas distributor in the area that can refill your tanks. And so what we've done is because you will, in doing your research, you will know that 
any gas distributor is going to charge you a surcharge for safe handling of that tank. And so there's about a $29 to $30 influx in your bill. So the tanks are relatively inexpensive. The oxygen tank is about $8 to fill. The nitrogen tank is about $20 to fill. The nitrogen tank is a heavy gas. It's going to last you twice as long as the oxygen tank. And so while that's pretty inexpensive, you do have to factor in that every time they come to your office, you are going to have to pay that safe handling charge. So what we did was you're renting the tanks and everything as is. So we just said, hey, we're going to rent 10 tanks. We'll send 10 back when they're empty. Give us 10 back full. And so it really kind of offsets that cost. And so because this is a cash for, for service type of thing, you really are making a lot of profit off of this with very minimal cost to the practice. Well, I think the pro I think the profit depends on how much you charge, and we are not going to talk about how much we right, charge. That's true. We don't want to be <laughs> accused. We that's do not true. want to be accused of collusion or anything like that. Right, right, um, right. But uh, that suffices to say that you it, it is uh, it is a line of service that is much needed for the patients, and it is not going to be you're not going to lose money for providing the service. No. And no. the it, it, the the safe handling charge I. I don't really know how much we are being charged for for delivery, but um, that is a concern, of course, depending on where you <laughs> practice. In your area, you guys may be subject to local rules that impose mm -hmm. these these fees. So that may be part of the reason why uh, there's that hefty uh, delivery charge. And how do you guys, speaking of these tanks, you've got 10 tanks at least in each yeah. office. How do you store these tanks? So the, the representatives, you can also, they're actually really great resources, but sometimes you do have to dig with them. They, are, they get so focused on, you know, teaching you about the unit and selling you the unit and, and the effectiveness of the unit that sometimes you don't think about these small little things that are kind of important. And so we had asked our, our actually our tank distributor uh, for some tank holders and, and they were pretty pricey. And so we did just end up going on Amazon. There's so many different options. You just get some, it's basically like a crate and it just allows the tanks to be in a safe stand up position without having to worry about them knocking over or falling over. Uh, so we just got a couple of those and does the job. I do not have pictures of those Amazon holding tanks. However, we do have one that is metal and it's on a it's on wheels. Um, it holds, I think, what nine at a time. And so for my office, I think that is adequate. But obviously, you all should pick the one that works the best for you in your offices. Yes. Because you definitely don't want them falling over. Even though I mean, some offices could be in a, in a high rise. Uh, there, some air, some offices are in a earthquake prone area, maybe in California mm -hmm. or something like that. So yeah. They, yeah, they have to worry a little bit more um, about the safety and storage of these tanks. And institutions obviously have a lot of uh, red tape to jump through. John, can you speak to um, what kind of contraindications, like patients that you don't use the nitrous in? Can you talk to, kind of speak to that? So most of my patients are, I use them on mostly vasectomy patients uh, because I can I, I can pretty much reassure the patients that cystoscopies and everything else, uh, yeah, I use it on, on vasectomies and, and prostate biopsies, I guess. Those would be the most. Uh, so most of my users, I would say thousands of my users in the last two, almost three years, have been young men. So they, they, they are healthy, they don't have any pulmonary issues, they don't have any dexterity issues where they couldn't hold the uh, gas. The contraindication list is very, it's not very long and COPD, even COPD risk is kind of theoretical. But I have not had anyone who couldn't, in my office, who couldn't have uh, nitrous oxide. And the, um, I, would, I would say, instead of running through the laundry list of contraindications, I would, uh, ask the uh, reps that are, that are selling you the machines to provide you that list it could be updated more updated than what we provide here so that's probably so the main things Correct. are for me i, I want to make sure the patient can actually hold on to the to the tube and uh, pulmonary issues are really really not a big deal for me yeah we we have even used it with some copd patients i think it's best that you just assess each patient individually because we do do it use it with a lot of prostate biopsies, a lot of prostate procedures. 
we we've used it on guys as old as 96 and and guys as young as as 26 and so I, i think it's really a great safe choice you don't need to get any primary care you know, prior, you know, pre-assessment clearance or or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it it really is quite safe, quite convenient and uh, relatively great for, for the staff, for the, for the patients and and really just a good option to, to get patients to those procedures that may just have a little bit of fear that just kind of needs a little bit of smoothing over. It, it truly provides such a much better uh, patient experience, no matter what you're doing. Um, obviously, pulmonary issues, cranial facial defects, pregnancy, those, yeah, those are the things that you want to watch out for. And, and um, uh, there's, there's a short list of contraindications, but I have, in, in over, almost three years of using this, I have not had anyone who's uh, contraindicated to undergo nitrous oxide. Yeah, and, that, and that's great. You know, there's so many contraindications to IV sedation and, and you know, just kind of the, the ropes that you've kind of got to jump through to get there. And so it's really just a great thing. It doesn't take up much space in the office, relatively small, uh, easy for staff to learn how to use. I think we had everybody on board using it within just a week, less than a week. And, and don't be afraid to use your reps because I think sometimes people, offices are a little bit afraid to call on the reps once they have the equipment. Um, but the reps are there for, to kind of guide you through this, to help you out, to show you all those little steps. And I would encourage you that when you get your unit, to make sure that your rep is there one day that that week that you first start using it, make sure that you iron out all the kinks so that you're not in the middle of a procedure with a patient and, and having to, to kind of fumble through that. So don't be afraid to use your reps. One of the biggest factors in implementing whatever successful line of business in your practice is workflow. And we, I don't think we're not going to talk about workflow, but those of you who are interested, who are in urology practices, uh, feel free to join the Thriving Urology Practice Facebook group. That's what we, what we talk about, anything and everything urology related, how to make your uh, practices more successful. But um, your staff will, will have, you will have to have a workflow that you implement so that your front desk will, will have to know how to capture and uh, that the, the money that is needed uh, for this line of service and your back office needs to, or your physicians or you have to indicate in the EHR that this patient is opted for nitrous, that the, the, the staff, front desk staff will need to, have, need to collect that. And on the day of the procedure, patients can change their minds, right? Some of my patients say, oh, I don't right. need it. But then the last minute they say, yeah, I want the gas. <laughs> so yeah. the, the, the documentation has to be there and the office, the, the back office needs to know so they can have the machine ready. And like you said, the footprint is actually really, really small and uh, training is minimal for the staff. Yeah. And I think it's a good idea that even though this is uh, self-actuated, that it's a good idea for your office to just have have a generic consent form made. Our rep, our Pronox rep gave us a generic one to use. Have a, have a, an office policy as far as payment, how you're going to collect that. Um, really great to collect that at the time of service instead of chasing people for that payment. Uh, and just kind of have those protocols in place to just make sure that you've got your T's crossed, your I's dotted. Uh, because this is a cash for service sort of thing. And that can be new for some patients that are used to, especially older patients that are used to having most everything go through their insurance first to kind of just wait, why are you charging me? Or, you know, so it's, it's good to have those policies and procedures in place too. Right. For those uh, older patients who have Medicare and the supplemental insurance, they would have, yeah, they would have nothing out of pocket. But for, uh, I mean, I do a lot of vasectomy. So most of my vasectomy patients are having to pay something out of pocket. And uh, uh, so that is really, we're, we're kind of used to that here in my practice, mm-hmm. but I, I can see for some areas that are Medicare heavy with a lot of yeah. Medicare patients with supplemental insurance, that could be a surprise. So when it comes yeah. to, I'm going to briefly talk about nitro, let's see, nitronox, pronox, nitro seal. Nitro seal is a, a third system that is out there, but the amount of gas is adjustable where that machine may be handy, uh, maybe at those practices that may be at a higher elevation so that you may need to drive the nitrous a little bit harder. 
Uh, so nitrous seal is a third system that for those practices that are a little bit at, at a different elevation, you may you may need that system to, to deliver enough nitrous uh, to the uh, patient. So that's something to consider. Otherwise, Stephanie and I are both uh, very happy with our Pronox machines, and she favors the uh, Nitronox because she does not, doesn't like the alarm. I love the simplicity of Pronox in that there is an alarm and is not continuously alarming when the gas is, is out. It's only alarming when the patient, while it's in use, the patient is taking a breath and then it goes off. But um, obviously you can always test out what that sounds like. The, the reps are, are very, very handy in showing you what that sounds like. I don't think it's that loud. Uh, but even 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 when the patient is in front of me and he's using the gas and I'm standing right next to the patient with the machine next to me, it is it is not too disconcerting, but it is definitely noticeable. And I think for me, as as the person in charge of the patient, not having to constantly look at the gauge is a plus. Um, and when it runs yeah. low, we can just briefly stop, change out the tank. It takes a couple of minutes. And uh, we we take th then the problem is solved. What my medical assistants do is that they will look at the gauges on the actual tanks, make sure that we're not running too low, and then kind of estimate. Okay, we're going to be doing a vasectomy. It's going to take less than ten minutes, so it should be enough gas to last throughout the case. But um, yeah, it's definitely beneficial. Um, any any parting uh, suggestions or words for those uh, who no. may be watching? Yeah, the, the, the one thing that I just thought of is that's important to remember with these units is I remember when we first got it and, and we had to we had to put it together a little bit and um, thinking, where do I plug this thing in? Oh, yeah. But actually, there's no there's no it does not require any sort of electrical or battery operated device. So that's really cool that this, these machines are running simply on pressure from the tanks. So you don't have to worry about having an outlet. Is it plugged in? Did I charge the battery? Uh, none of that. And so that that was kind of a, a kind of a cool thing I thought about the machine itself. It's truly a beautiful, uh, elegant solution in delivering a, a fixed 50-50 a mixture of nitrous oxide and oxygen to the patient so that they can feel more comfortable, uh, decrease pain, decrease anxiety, and for some patients, they may forget about the procedure. Um, I do like the fact that it's gas-driven. I do like the fact that you do not have to plug it in, which is huge. On the other hand, I believe uh, there's a, lot, a little bit more uh, finagling with the machine if you use that third system out there, nitrile seal. Uh, so that is something else to uh, consider when looking at these uh, various systems. Yes, but it, it really can be a great system and a great solution for your practice too. And so it's definitely one of those things that has uh, change is, is never uh, an easy thing. So sometimes bringing these things on board can be a little bit scary, but I know for our office, it really has, has change done made the practice to a 180 and so really it really is a great option out there implementation is very straightforward uh, staff like you said staff acceptance and uptake is uh, really rapid and medicine <laughs> medicine changes in medicine everything change well change is difficult for for just us as humans and mm -hmm. changes in medicine happen glacially it is so slowly and there's so much uh, status quo bias, meaning, well, right. things are working fine now, I'm not going to change. Well, <laughs> everything else changes around us, advances, AI and machine learning and everything else is changing. Um, and yet offices are very, very slow to adopt some of the improvements in patient care. So I want to thank you so much for coming on with, uh, with the yeah, thank three you. kids. Thanks for having me. Yeah, late, late. <laughs> Sorry about the kid interruption. Late at night. No, we really, really appreciate you uh, taking time. And uh, certainly, if you have any other topics that you're passionate about, we will certainly uh, do do another live video and share that information with everyone. So thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. All right, that is it for uh, this uh, edition of Nitrous uh, Nitrox blah, Pronox versus. <laughs> Pronox versus Nitronox, and there's that third system, Nitroseal, out there. Uh, if I can, I will put the links to all three systems in the video description. If you have any comments or suggestions, feel free to leave them. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.